morning, everybody. Welcome back to Chemistry. Today we're going to talk about electron configuration. Okay. Last time, y'all watched a video and it talked about the Bohr model. I'm going to use carbon as my example. Okay. Now we know that carbon, if you look on the periodic table, has six protons, six electrons, and six neutrons, right? But when we talk about electron configuration, all we're worried about is the electrons, okay? The six electrons here. We know it's carbon, 6p. But what we're really interested in is distributing these electrons into the energy level. Well, we learned that the energy level, the first energy level can only hold two electrons, the second energy level can hold eight, the third can hold eight, and the fourth can hold 18, right? So that's what we learned. So we know with carbon, in this first energy level, we have six total electrons we gotta distribute out. Well, in the first energy level, we can only put out two, okay? So then we gotta draw another energy level. Well, this next energy level can hold eight, but we've already put out two of the six, so that means we only got four left, right? So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. So that means our electron configuration numbers would be two, four, right? That's what we learned. Well, that's all fine and dandy, learning about you know the, the electrons going into the energy levels, but what we want to really learn about is where are these electrons actually going, okay? Where are they actually going? Well, if I could take a picture right here and zoom in on an energy level, right? Let me draw my little magnifying glass. And we could zoom in and see what's actually going on inside that energy level. We would see some stuff, okay? And what we would see is that within each energy level, we have shells, subshells, okay? There are four subshells. We have S, F, D, and P. And what it's like, if we could zoom in on the energy level itself, we would see that we have these little sublevels that the electrons go in within the energy level, okay? So this would be the energy level here going around. And within that energy level, we have these sublevels, S, F, D, P, okay? Now, this can get kind of complicated, but I'm gonna to try to keep this very simple. Just remember, what we're talking about today are these energy rings and what we find inside the energy rings, these subshells. SFDP, okay? So SFDP, you gotta remember that, okay? So this brings me to our periodic table, okay? Because I'm gonna teach you how to do this without all the drawing the picture stuff, okay? So let's look at the periodic table. Now if you've noticed, I wrote something here for you. The order of energy level fill up. We're gonna always fill up the S first. We're gonna fill up the F second, then we'll fill up the D, and then we'll fill up the P, okay? Now, looking at the periodic table, we read the periodic table. This is important, this is gonna be a test question. We read the periodic table from left to right, and then down, just like you would read a book. From left to right, then down from left to right, then down. Just like you read a book, that's how you read the periodic table. And you'll notice the atomic number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The, the periodic table is ordered in increasing atomic number from left to right, then down, because they want you reading it like a book, okay? So that's very important. Now, I did some labeling on this periodic table. What I labeled were the subshells. We have SFDP all over the place here, but I'm gonna show you where everything is at, okay? By the way, helium here, he is actually what we call 2S, 
2, okay? 2s2. Now, our s's are found on groups 1 and 2. These are your s's, okay? From 3 to 12, you find your d's. All these guys right here are d's. Now, all these guys right here are your p's, and these two guys down here are your f's, okay? So, I want you to look at something here. S's, we're going to look at energy level. Here's your first energy level, second energy level, third energy level, fourth energy level, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Since we're reading the periodic table from left to right, this is our first energy level. This is your second energy level, third energy level, fourth energy level, fifth, sixth, and seventh energy level. So these, each one of these energy levels re re represent a ring on an element, okay? These would be your rings, each energy level, okay? Now, knowing that, let's look at something here. The first energy level only contains S electrons. Look at this, 1S, 2S. The second energy level only contains, well, it has two things, S and P, right? Let's drop down to the fourth energy level. We have S, D, and P energy within the energy level. And if we drop way down here to the sixth, look, this little line right here is pointing you this way. We have S, F, D, P. So when we get to these high, lo, higher energy levels, we start seeing the S. But remember, we're only reading from left to right. So when they talk about electron configuration, you're going to do it from left to right. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to learn where every electron is in each subshell within an energy level. Okay? Let's use nitrogen for our example here. We're going to do an example with nitrogen. Okay? Let me get another piece of paper. I'm going to put it right here, okay? We're going to do nitrogen, so I'm going to put it in for nitrogen, okay? Now, we're going to go completely through the energy level. The first energy level is the 1s, right? We're at the 1s energy level. We're going to go straight through because we're going to try to get to nitrogen. And remember, when you're doing electron configurations, you always start at the very beginning and go left to right, working your way down until you hit the element, okay? So the first energy level, we'll move this up, is the 1s, right? So how many elements are we going through? One, two, so that's two we went through. So I'm gonna draw my little line. We're gonna drop down, because I'm not at nitrogen yet. Where am I at now? 2s, right? So I'm gonna draw my 2s. Now, how many elements am I going to go through? Because if I go straight through, look what I hit right here. I hit the 2p. So for two s's, I'm only going through two elements. So 2s2, I'm going to draw my line, okay? And then I hit the 2p, so I'm going to write 2p, okay? Now, in the 2p's, where is nitrogen in the 2p's? One, two, three. He's the third one there. So I'm going to put 2p3. That wasn't hard. This is the electron configuration for nitrogen, right? Now, if you drew the Bohr model for nitrogen here, if I went in, you would look that nitrogen has seven electrons. So the first energy level, remember that 2, 8, 8, 18 thing? The first energy level would get two electrons. Well, two from seven means five, so I got five more to put out. So this guy can hold eight, but I only need to put out five. One, two, three, four, five, right? So what would be your numbers here? Well, it would be two, five, right? Well, let's look at what this is saying here. Check this out. How many is in the first energy level? This would be your first energy level, the one, right? How many electrons are in there? Two. See the twos here? Well, that's your second energy level. And how many electrons are in there? Two and three, so that's five. It matches. 
But what we have here is more detail. You're able to look at it and say, hey, yeah, there are two electrons in the first energy level, but they're sitting in uh, S shells. Well, there's five electrons in the second level. Well, I know there's two electrons sitting in S shells, and there's three electrons sitting in the P shell. So we're more detailed at exactly where all the electrons are. And that's what makes the electron configuration awesome. So this is the electron configuration for nitrogen. It lets you know exactly where all the electrons are. So let's do one more example together just to make sure we have it. Let's look at the electron configuration, I don't know, let's say for chlorine, Cl, right? So that means I got to start at the beginning. Let me pull this down. I got to start at the beginning and work my way across until I get to chlorine. So I'm right here. So I'm going to start at the top. I'm at the 2s, the 1s level. Okay. How many electrons do I go through at the at the s's? Yeah, I wrote this all wrong. This should be 1s, 1s2. Okay. So I go through two electrons. I'm going to draw my little line. I'm going to drop down. Now I'm at the two S's. I'm going to draw two S's. I'm going to go through two electrons. Then I'm going to keep going. And now I'm at the two P's. I'm going to go look. Two P. Well, how many electrons? Is chlorine in here? Nope. So I go straight through. One, two, three, four, five, six. So P gets six. And we'll drop down to the next level. This is the energy level I find chlorine, right? So I'm going to start right here. We got three S. How many do I go through? Two. And now I'm at three P. Where where is chlorine on the three P? One, two, three, four, five. Right. So this is the electron configuration from chlorine. That wasn't hard, was it? So guys, just to do a re quick recap, in the first energy level. We have two electrons. In the second energy level, six, seven, eight electrons. In the third energy level, we have seven. So that's what our electron configuration numbers would be, two, eight, and seven. Okay? But I'm not worried about electron configuration numbers. I'm worried about just the electron configuration itself because what we're doing here is I'm slowly pulling y'all into bonding. And we're going to see what bonding is and how bonding happens. But for right now, I want y'all focusing on the electron configuration. I hope this helps you, and have a great day.